Hello everyone and welcome back to the K9P4 training portal. I'm your host Sam. Today we'll be going through dilutions on the eye sperm. Now this is only a necessary step when you have to dilute your raw or extended semen sample into range for readings of progressive motility percentages. So what situation might we come across where we need to actually perform this dilution? So in the instance we have any result over 75 million per milliliter and we need a good progressive motility or PMSC result for that sample, we're gonna to have to perform a dilution to get it into range. You need to have it diluted enough so the camera can visually identify where the sp sperms are moving and how they're moving. And we're gonna show you later exactly what's, what that looks like. When you have a raw sample, often the sperms are very crowded, sometimes even when already extended, but certainly when they're raw, and this can be hard for the, both the naked eye and the camera to distinguish the movements of the sperms. The standard procedure we recommend here at K9P4 is to first get a raw count of the semen in question. So here we have raw, undiluted semen with no extender in it. You can see it's kind of that milky white color. Now, perform any processing you would normally do prior to taking this reading. For instance, removing any prostatic fluid can and should still be done prior to getting the raw analysis. But hold off on extending your semen until after we get the raw to help you easily calculate what extension ratio you need to get your progressive reading. So here we have this two milliliter sample of sperm. You may have a larger 15 milliliter tube but more often than not. So the first step we need is to get a reading on this raw count. So for that, I'm gonna use a two milliliter tube. And another step in question here is to make sure it's well mixed even after 10 or 15 minutes. A concentration gradient can form. The sperm cells can agglutinate or attack protein and other fibers or debris. So we wanna make sure this is well mixed so that when we do take a sample, it is representative of the entire sample. You may find that if it's not well mixed, Taking a sample off the top leads to a lower concentration than what's actually found in the entire sample. So to do this, we're gonna mix by inversion gently about 10 or 15 times. So now let's set our raw semen sample up and do the first analysis. So first to do that, we'll remove the sample collector from the eye sperm. Double check quick that the batteries have not ran out and that your light is visible. Um, if not, you will need to take off the casing and replace the batteries. And we'll put the base chip of the iSperm chipset firmly on the top. Next, we're going to use the pipette method. This requires the 7.5 microliter pipette volume of semen. This is what we're going to recommend here at K9P4. Again, there are three total methods of sampling outlined in the AidMix iSperm manual. We find this one to be the easiest and most accurate, so that's what we will demonstrate today. So we'll dispense that sperm sample right onto the base chip. We will then take a cover chip, try to avoid placing it on dirty or contaminated surfaces. Quickly invert and flip over the sample collector and cover chip and snap it together until it clicks into place. This will create about a one cell thick layer of the sperm sample to then take an analysis with. Next, we insert it into the back of our warmer. And proceed on screen to continue the analysis. So with our sample in place, we can now go to the app, choose Analyze Now, making sure our light is turned on so that we can begin the analysis. So first, and you can kind of see here just how crowded these sperm cells are. Now, the amount of crowding that they have may even affect their, their motility ratings. So here we see in this result, and we're gonna want to turn it so that the arrow faces 90 degrees each time and repeat the analysis first, making sure that we do the analysis four times from different angles to get the best average. But we can see here that we have a very high concentration in this raw sample. 
turn it another 90 degrees. Okay, so now that we have our four readings, we're gonna go to complete analysis. We're gonna take a look at the final average here of 472.75 million per milliliter. We have an average reading of 88% motility. However, we do not have a progressive reading. This is because, and as indicated in the app, the concentration is too high to produce this reading. We do not have kinetics either. So we're gonna to need to dilute this down to the 10 to 75 million per milliliter range. The next step is simply to click the check mark on top, enter the ID for the historical, and go back to the main screen. So now that we have the raw concentration count of approximately 470 million per milliliter, use the provided chart from K9P4 to calculate your dilution ratio. Now, for this dilution ratio, the values should be close to exact. So we certainly recommend using a mechanical pipe editor. So we have a result of 470, and I'm looking here on the chart at 450 million. We're recommended to dilute one part to nine parts, or one to nine dilution. At 500 million, we're recommended a one to 10. I'm just going to average this up to 500, and we're gonna perform a one to 10, one part to 10 part ratio, or one to 10 dilution. Again, keep in mind that's 11 total parts, one part raw semen, 10 part extender. You may also use saline for this dilution, but typically any extender will work great. Make sure the extender and the semen are at the same temperature to avoid thermal shock, as this can kill off your semen and lead to a lower motility and progressive motility than truly expected. So we have our semen extender here, and we're just gonna prepare this. We have our raw here. Included in your kit is two milliliter centrifuge tubes. We're gonna to wanna to mix this dilution in a new tube so that we don't potentially waste the raw semen. If we get the dilution ratio wrong, or if it doesn't match what we wanna use for shipping, that could harm that process. So what we're gonna do is take a very small amount of the semen and mix it in this cup at that suggested ratio. Now again, for this mixture, we recommend more than 100 microliters total. We'd prefer to be in about the 200 microliter range just so that the contents will mix well. So we need a one to 10. That could be 10 microliters of semen and 100 microliters of extender or saline. But since that's 100 and we wanna have a little bit more than that to allow for uh, such small values, we're gonna make this 20 microliters of semen and 200 microliters of our extender. So your pipette included will go up to 10 microliters. We're gonna turn the volume adjustment knob up to 10. Place a new tip firmly on and take two samples for a total of 20 microliters and pipette it into the bottom. So to do this at our required ratio of one to 10, we're gonna take 20 microliters of the sperm, alternatively 200 microliters or 10 times as much of the extender and mix it into a new two milliliter cup, which is included in your kit. So first and always first, add the extender or saline to the dilution tube first. So to do this amount of 200 microliters, we're gonna use an exact tool, a mechanical pipe editor, set it to 200 microliters. Place a new tip on, go down to the first stop, and dispense the 200 into the tube. Next, after that, we're gonna take our pipe editor Include it in your kit and use the volume adjustment knob to turn it up to 10 microliters. As a reminder, we need 20, so we'll have to take this measurement twice. So we take 10 microliters of the sperm. And with this small of a volume, just be sure to put the pipette tip directly into the water. Now, because my tip Touch the mixture, I'm gonna put place a new tip on the pipetter. Take another 10 for a total of 20. Inject directly 
into the extender solution. And then from here, we can mix it. Be aware that such a small amount may cling to plastic or glass surfaces. So if you're able to use more volume than the 200 microliter total recommended, that's gonna help with mixing. You can mix it by inversion and we can even briefly mix it via vortexer. So now once that step is done, we have a one to 10 dilution and we can proceed with our testing to find the progressive motility of this raw sample. So after performing our one to 10 dilution, we re-ran the test and got a result, the first result of 46 million with a slightly decreased motility percentage of 62%. Again, that number can vary depending on what it's mixed with, what temperature it's at when doing analysis, and the condition age of the sperms themselves. But since we're in the 10 to 75 million per milliliter range, we now finally have the progressive sperm count, which for this sample is a measly 14%. Now this is a highly underperforming sample. However, there are a variety of different things that can contribute to lack of good movement from the sperm cells. And these items should be evaluated, including age, temperature, mixing, type of extender used, and so on and so forth. It's important to note that when performing these dilutions, do not use water as the water actually can immediately kill the sperm cells, registering in a 0% motility and leading to, of course, a 0% progressive motility. So when doing your dilutions, use an extender or at worst saline solution. Um, you won't need to use very much for this mixture, but be sure to avoid using water as you're gonna result likely in a 0% motility. The 40 to 50 million per milliliter mark we have the sperms that are a lot better spaced out and the system can accurately track each one and get velocities as well as good motility and total motility. So here again, we have a 60% modal and a 14% progressive. We're gonna do the analysis two more times to get the best average. So at the end, we're gonna choose complete analysis and we have the average populate here from the three tests performed. You can look at any one by sliding left or right on the screen. The average motility of 59%, again, that's just total in motion, and a good progressive forward motility of only 16% average on the sample. So again, a number of things can contribute to this. Most commonly, temperature differences between the extenders and the sperm, handling, age of sperm, and the health of the sperm that the dog produces. All these metrics will help you best prepare and plan for inseminations and for shipping out sperm. And now, with our raw sperm sample, having the progressive produced, we can now mix this with any extender for shipment or insemination at the recommended ratio of the product because we had separated off a small amount for the dilution in order to reach the progressive motility value. Uh, this is your host, Sam, with K9P4. We're glad you visited us, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks, and have a great day.